time the client is the student and the parent is the recipient. So that's going to become important um, uh, as we um, as we're going to be discussing uh, in a little bit. And ongoing campaign are typically what you would do. Some people call it drip marketing. So when you do ongoing campaigns for um, prospects, for example, which is the most common use, but we, you will see that there is other exciting use case for it. The idea is you're going to have, uh, and I'm going to switch back and forth between my prospects board here. Uh, you have, uh, you know, some prospects. You know, these are my standard statuses right so prospect new prospect follow-up prospect trial prospect trial follow-up prospect sleep and then if you show them you have the prospects that are lost so this is a typical funnel as you probably know maybe some of you don't um there's going to be uh some uh you, these are completely customizable so you can call those differently you can reorganize them you can you know have a different funnel but the idea is you're going to have customers coming in through lead capture through um, they called you or they SMS you or through um, uh, a link that you provide uh, in a newsletter or on your website or in different places. Um, and they're going to be entering your funnel. So they, they might be entering your funnel directly as a, uh, as a new prospect. So a prospect that I call the, an unqualified prospect. So somebody that's, you know, express interest, but you don't know yet if it's a good fit or, or, or not, or if you can serve that customer or not. And, um, or uh, a more qualified prospect so they already told you they want this location tuesday afternoon at 5 pm they only want piano and maybe they want this particular teacher they heard about um and um and this prospect is going to navigate through your funnel and hopefully as fast as possible and the ultimate goal is to sign up that that customer right so we want to get we want to get these students signed up um note that i'm i mean i'm probably stating the obvious but some prospect will enter your funnel directly as a prospect trial, meaning they, they at least if you do trial lessons, um, they are going to be um, browsing your website or seeing your ad on Facebook or Google or wherever, clicking on the link. Usually that might be a landing page where you provide more details and then um, self-booking directly into Opus One IO for a trial lesson. So that means they're going to have a trial pending. Um, and we've, had, we've done a couple of other uh, webinars on this the past few weeks that explains how to set up your your service lifecycle statuses to say if you book a piano trial uh, lesson, you automatically uh, get this status. So you get the prospect trial status and you show up here directly. And what you can also do, I'm, I'm, I'm faking it manually here for the sake of time, but you can also auto tag based on the instrument, for example, the client that booked the piano trial lesson. So when you look at them, you can you can see directly that um, they uh, they've um, they have a uh, they auto tagged for the for the instrument that they booked a trial for, um, and then you know from there that trial you know maybe it happens sometimes people cancel the trial they can't make it so you can set it that the customer goes automatically back to prospect follow up so we need to get them back in we need to maybe they got a um, um, a trial credit right because either they paid for that trial maybe they, maybe you do free trial whatever you do um, so if that if that trial gets canceled they go back into the queue where we want to get them back in, right? So uh, alternatively, more likely, hopefully, they're going to show up for the trial and they are going to um, they are going to actually uh, do that trial and then they're going to move to the next status, which is prospect follow-up, trial follow-up, sorry, which means they had their trial and now we need to convert them. Um, and as you know, even without Opus One IO Plus, you can have a, a automated conversion. So an email that goes to the client right after their uh, their trial that says hey this spot is available um click here if you'd like to sign up and here is the quote and here is what it would cost you to convert to a weekly lesson after that and uh, um and then of course the client may sign up on their own so they may basically enter the funnel and go through the funnel completely automatically without having to follow up and call them or do any kind of action um that's the that's the best case scenario i would say and it does happen a lot i mean i have in my school a lot of customers who self-book their trials come in you know um and ask a few questions at the front desk and sign up on their phone when they get home and done they, they signed up very easy now this is the ideal use case it's not always what happens right um you're gonna have try uh, you're gonna have prospect accumulating um at different stages so maybe they they you know they express interest but they're they're in your in their new prospect but you still don't know exactly what instrument they want and and um, they haven't booked a trial yet, so you're going to have some new prospect accumulating here. You're going to have prospect that are that have been that you're actively following up with, um, but these prospects um, 
maybe they, they you got their info at a fair or at a at some kind of event or they failed your lead capture and you know or, or you know they're interested but they haven't signed up for anything yet and maybe you know what instrument they want they're a little bit more qualified but they haven't signed up yet right so and then maybe they they maybe they had a trial so you have a bunch of people who had a trial lesson but they haven't signed up yet and maybe you have some that you move to sleep sleep again you can call this separate uh, um, uh, differently if you want but this would be uh, maybe the kid is not ready yet. They tell you, well, you know, we're we like your your lessons, but um, uh, my kid is only five year old. He's a little bit all over the place. You know, I don't think he's mature enough. We, you know, contact us back in six months or in three months or whatever, right? So you're gonna have all kinds of situation where you're gonna be accumulating prospects and leads, and um, and prior to ongoing campaign, you would have to basically, you know, call them, SMS, you know, email them manually. And follow up with them on a regular basis until ultimately they hopefully either sign up and they be they count it as a as a one prospect, or or sadly if they're not interested and they chose another school or gave up on music whatever the reason is, uh, you're gonna move them to last. So, so this this is great. I mean this is what most people do with a CRM, but I, the idea is to automate this process a little bit more and. Um, what I one thing I noticed um, with my own staff is that they were spending a lot of time and missing also a lot of prospects. Uh, they were spending a lot of time um, following up with prospects uh, by email, by SMS, and the the follow up emails and SMS were very often the same. It's like, hey, you know, we're here to help you. Have you decided on what instrument you'd like to use or, or you'd like to, to to sign up for? And and I realized like, you know, we should just automate these things, right? Why having why doing these this this um, a prospect a follow up manually? when um first of all we need some time to email or sms somebody like multiple times because those parents are busy um maybe they they wanted to take piano lesson but then they, something else came 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 up and they, they're too busy and you need to send them a few emails a few sms until they're like okay well now we're ready to sign up so definitely what you don't want to do is just leave that on the table and not address all these potential prospects that you could be signing up right so um so that's kind of like in a nutshell what um ongoing campaigns is at least today it's a way to create what we call drip marketing campaigns and that's one way to call it but basically creating sequences of emails and sms and potential actions as well that will allow you to automate follow up with these uh clients on a regular basis until they tell you stop uh, contacting me or okay done, good i'm signing up uh or maybe you know just um, maybe don't contact me for the next three months because we're not ready for it right so any of those uh, scenarios so um so first of all i mean the the, the ongoing campaigns are based uh, on the prospect statuses so we're going to create different campaigns that are going to be ongoing that are going to be constantly emailing smsing or flagging these accounts or these leads, these prospects, and um, and giving you an idea of where they are in the, where they are in the process, and uh, and hope ho hopefully ultimately um, getting those those customers signed up. Right. So let's take a look at how it works. Now, one thing I also want to add um, when you go into campaigns uh, and you um, we're gonna be so today ongoing campaigns as of the private beta that we have, which we should probably be out of beta very soon. I think so far as everything has been working very well um we uh we really only talk about prospects but there is other use cases right so i want to talk a little bit about it um and those are not available yet but we're working on it and they're going to be available over the next uh you know two to three weeks maybe maybe sooner maybe within a month let's say with the next two to four weeks uh, another use case for ongoing campaigns is being able to not just target um prospects but target current students right and being able to say Oh, uh, let's say, so a typical thing that many schools have asked about, and we're going to be able to support that very soon, is the ability to create a campaign that could be a new subscription follow-up campaign, let's say, let's call it that way. And when you sign up a new student for a subscription, whether it's a group class or private lesson and whatever the instrument is, or you know, all of that will be configurable, you'll be able to say, for every new subscription that we sign up in 30 days, or after 30 days that that subscription has been active, and of course, if it's not ending, right, um, we're going to email the, this template to the customer. And that template could be, you know, um, we hope you're enjoying your lessons. You know, please contact us if uh, you have any questions or if you have any uh, problem with your teacher or whatever you want to say. And kind of a check-in, a 30-day check-in with your, with, your, with your new students to ensure that they're happy. Maybe at 60 day, you're going to send another check-in where you say, okay, so it looks like you're enjoying your guitar lessons. 
Um, how about uh, maybe can we get a Google review or Yelp review that will help us uh, grow the school, et cetera. So you could do like regular check-ins automatically with parents uh, with new uh, subscriptions essentially, and it could be done in different ways. So that's that. what I just mentioned will be available soon. It's not available today, but it's something we're actively working on that you should be able to do very soon. So there is plenty of use cases for those ongoing com campaign. That's what I'm trying to, to say. But in today's demo, I'm going to focus more on ongoing campaigns you're going to be doing for your um, for your prospects, right? But again, it will apply to other, um, not just prospects. So um, I have a demo kind of pre uh, preset so we can save a little bit of time. You see I have four campaigns. They're all in draft. That means they, they are being edited. They're not final yet. Um, in the campaigns interface, you can select, I only want to see my one-time campaign, so your newsletters and other things that you, you scheduled before or that you're about to schedule for the future or the ongoing one. Uh, you can also, um, you know, uh, filter by status, obviously. So let's take a look at the prospect new sequence, right? So this is an ongoing campaign, and um, there is a tentative schedule date, but until you actually finish setting up that campaign and activate it, nothing will be sent, right? Um, so let's look at prospect new. I'm going to click uh, update here, and I'm going to close this. And um, so the campaign detail is pretty basic. The name you can set it to whatever you want. Uh, the uh, tentative is tentative start date, but you see as while you um, while the campaign is in draft and before it's been activated, nothing will happen, right? And then we're going to have stages. So stages is the most important thing. So this is what we're really going to sp be spending some time on. I'm going to collapse all of these so we have we see all the steps at once. Um, and okay, so. There's a lot of different options on how you can set up your stages. Uh, the idea of the stages is the different stages that that prospect will go through and the different emails or SMS or different action that will happen. Um, and let's talk about first is the, before we start, we talk about the stages is the criteria. So who qualifies, who is going to be matched to, to this particular uh, campaign, right? So here we called it uh, prospect new sequence. Uh, so it's called prospect new. Um, if you create a new campaign, you can just add a stage or add a criteria. So the criteria are pretty simple as of today. Um, they basically say, okay, well, um, right now we want to target, we're going to call it prospect new. We want to target a client that have the prospect new status, right? So that's basically, uh, if we go back to our um, prospect, is all these that, that are in the prospect new. Prospect new, by the way, is configurable, like I said, but in your business settings, uh, in, your, in the CRM setting, you're definitely, where is it? It's over here. Uh, if you haven't done it, you really need to specify so you can customize your, your prospect statuses. So this is the default ones that we that we propose, but again, you can reorganize them, you can rename them, you can change them to whatever uh, they want. Like, like everything, I always recommend to not go too crazy and keep things streamlined and simple to understand. So not having you know, 50 different statuses, uh, but kind of re reflecting um, uh, kind of like the stage uh, uh, or the, the life cycle status uh, at which they are. Um, keep in mind that, you know, they can also be member, member lost or lifetime member, and those are right now set automatically and not customizable. Um, quick note on that. Some people have asked, we're going to be decoupling the member status and the prospect status. So it's not, it's kind of there, but not there yet. You'll be able to have somebody that's a member, so they may be an active student and taking piano lessons, but they could also be prospect for violin lessons and going through that that motions as a as a as a prospect for violin while being an active member. Right now, it's not exactly possible, but the plumbing is in place, and we're going to be allowing that over the near future. So, uh, what I was about to say is that in those settings, what's important to set is, especially if you rename them, you need to tell the system what is the new prospect status. So when somebody fills up a lead form or somebody tr books a trial lesson or try to enroll into a group class and they don't complete the enrollment, they just basically fill the lead capture form or, or register the created their account but haven't actually booked, what do we want to tag them as? Or not tag, sorry, that's confusing. It's not the, the, what do we want to set as a status for them? So that basically where you where your funnel starts, that's the top of your funnel, the, the entrance of your funnel, if you will. So that's the new prospect uh, for new clients. Next one is um, you also want to set what is it What is it that you call a prospect that you lost? Well, by default, it's called prospect loss. You can rename that. And that's important because 
let's say we take uh, Jennifer Scott here and you know we we lost that that client they don't want to sign up as you move them to prospect lost we're going to ask you to give us a reason why you lost that client so we can track that loss and and understand why so maybe she's not interested not interested found another school right so you can have those those uh and that that gives us a way to give you a report on the prospect conversion and say okay i want to look at all the the prospect that were lost and see why they were lost so uh we we've covered this a little bit in the previous webinar you have this prospects conversion um which is basically the same thing as what you're seeing here but in a different format more like a table with more filters and also some um um uh you know, uh, percentage, win rate, loss rate, uh, averages, you know, and a way to, to have a, a uh, consolidated view by admin staff. So those that are assigned to those prospects or a detailed view, uh, basically based on who is assigned to each prospect. Sorry, details view is here for each prospect. You know, what is their individual status? When would they become a prospect? When was the last follow up? When is the next follow up due? When were they closed or were they closed or not? These were all closed because they're lost. Uh, where they won, where they lost, you know, what did they sign up with if they were won, et cetera, et cetera. So a way to, um, this is what you find typically in a, in a CRM like HubSpot or others, where you can basically have a, a status for each opportunity, each deal, for each prospect, whatever you want to call it. And um, and basically, you know, we, we talked a little bit about it again, but I'm kind of summarizing very quickly. When you When you have prospects, you can assign somebody in your staff this is not the teacher that's going to be teaching them. This is the staff you assign them to that prospect. So the staff basically in charge of that account. You can also commission your staff, your admin staff, your sales staff, whatever you call them, to get a commission when they actually signed up. So whoever is assigned here is the person that will get the commission. Uh, we have commissions for staff as well. Um, and it gives you a way to have some level of accountability among your staff on who signs up you know the most customers and 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 things like that right um so okay so i want to focus on, on on ongoing campaigns but i just want to kind of summarize a little bit um uh, these things so it's important to set your new prospect your new client status and is and your lost client status so we can track losses and we can track new clients as they come into the funnel whatever your your uh, your funnel here looks like um now, another thing that we're going to be talking about, I'm going to create them now because it's going to be useful in a little bit. We're going to create what we call client tag categories. So this is a kind of way to group uh, client tags. So I'm just going to do it very quickly now, and we're going to use it later in the demo. I'm going to, I'm going to create a category called instrument, and we're going, to, we're going to create here all the tags that fit the instrument that we provide. So let's say piano, voice, violin, guitar, cello, something like that. And we're going to create another category. You'll see this, this will become uh, uh, useful. We're going to call it specials. Um, that's for our special campaigns. And we're going to add here Black Friday. Uh, we're going to add here maybe uh, a special ad campaign. So let's call it FB ad, uh, I don't know, um, uh, summer. Uh, so whatever, whatever Facebook ad campaign or Google ad campaign, whatever kind of uh, special campaigns or special pricing or promotion you're going to be having. We're going to create, we're going to set those up as categories and you'll understand why later. Um, next, we have the lead capture uh, field. We already covered that. Um, you know, I don't think we're going to spend much time on this today. Um, if you have questions, we can talk about it. So okay, I'm going to update my settings here. Okay, so now uh, we have set up kind of the, the, ba the basic CRM settings um, and uh, we have our, our clients here. And we, let's take a look at what the, um, uh, ongoing campaign looks like. So you have a criteria, which is, you know, this, the all the clients that match this criteria, which is here, those that have the prospect new uh, status, will um, get these emails or SMS and all these stages one by one. So I'm going to talk about that. Now, a little bit of an advanced mode here, an advanced feature. Um, you could imagine, uh, so let's go back here to our uh, campaign. Let's say we're going to duplicate that sequence here. Uh, sorry, that uh, campaign. And we're going to create a specific campaign uh, that we're going to call Prospect New, but Black Friday. Um, so uh, actually, did I update the other one? Uh, yeah, let's update the copy instead. So we're going to update and, and this one do the Prospect New, but only Black Friday. So we're going to call it a hashtag Black Friday. So this is a little bit of, more of a... Of, um, more advanced use case, but I want to cover it. Um, so what we're doing here is basically saying that 
we're going to have two two ongoing campaigns and one is going to be um for my new um my new prospect um that are not part of a specific uh campaign like black friday and one specific to the customers that are associated with this promotion let's say we're, we're preparing a black friday promotion so what does that mean so on one in one case we're going to say i want and base and what we're trying to do here is we're trying to have two sequence or two multi-stage trip uh, campaigns but we want one of them to be sent to new prospects in general but that are not part of the black friday campaign and a specific sequence for those that are part of the black friday campaign right so a little bit more advanced use case that i want to point out here and why does it matter because it matters how we set up our criteria so here for example for the new uh new client sequence the the vanilla one if you will what we're going to do here is we're going to set up the criteria to be prospect new but also we're going to say we want all the clients that are prospect new but we don't want those that have the um oops sorry I, I timed out let me log back in sorry about that uh go back to my campaign so uh, uh prospect new sequence okay let's get this one um so we want the criteria i was about to set those that do not have the specials uh tag so what does that mean that means that we want this campaign to uh, be targeting clients that have the prospect new status but are not tagged with any tags within our specials group and our specials tags group if you remember was black friday and other things right so that will ensure that only the clients that have uh prospect new uh are receiving that sequence now on the other hand we're going to set up those that are part of the black friday sequence to be only those that are prospect prospect new and have the black friday tag so let's do this so and tag black friday so that way now if you see here and we click here right now there's nobody that's uh nobody that's actually targeted because we don't have a single prospect that have the black friday tag right so let's take let's go back to to my prospect here and now there's different ways that you can tag people right so let's talk about tagging tagging can be done manually so let's say you know that natalie owen here uh came from a black friday um uh event whatever that is promotion so i'm going to tag her manually maybe another one uh, but obviously, you know, there's going to be many cases where you want those tags to be automatically assigned, right? So how do you do that? Now, so first of all, if I go back now to my campaign and I have two, um, two uh, let's update here, and I have two clients that match, I'm going to have two clients that match the, the Black Friday. They are new clients in my, in my prospect funnel, and they have the Black Friday tag, right? Um, so a couple of ways that you can have um, um, people... Um, tagged with black friday um one way uh, that we introduce with this uh, new release is uh and i don't know if it's can I'm, i want to make sure that you guys can see this because i'm going to open another window i'm going to open a, a um anonymous window uh so hold on i need to switch give me one second uh so let's see you guys don't see the window i just opened let me reshare and add uh present something else yes let's add another window i'm gonna add this one uh can you guys see the new lead capture window that i have here i think so so now this is the slash lead is the uh lead capture form that you have in opus one io it has your logo it's customizable obviously if you're not aware you can customize this text we want to capture information about uh, clients that are interested in your uh, lessons. Uh, so either, either they they providing information for their their dependents, or they intend to set up to to register, or to um, they want to look for look for lessons for they're inquiring for uh, their their kids or for themselves, right? So when they ask for themselves, we only ask for their own um, uh, information. Uh, but if they actually uh, ask for for their kids, we need both their information because we're going to be talking to mom or dad here, and we need to know something is about the kids, and especially uh, you know information that may have been um, entered um, or in your customizable uh, lead capture form. So anyway, I don't want to cover the lead capture form in too much details unless there is questions. But the, what's important here is you can add tags to your lead capture form. So you can add 
a, sim, a, a typical syntax. And you show, if you work with marketing agencies, um, they're very familiar with this because there's this is widely commonly used when you do Google ads or Facebook ads. You can create what we call UTM tags, or this is just an Opus Fundio tag, if you will. So you, you can add more uh, parameters like to UTM, a UTM campaign. Uh, so let's call it uh, Black Friday, Black Friday FB campaign ad, whatever. So you can create. Um, you can basically add tags, and we, we have a knowledge base article that's going to be explaining that in more details, but you can create uh, and add additional tags. And these tags will be captured by Opus One IO, and we will do something with it, right? So for example, the first one I was talking about here is being able to auto tag clients. So basically, you have one lead capture form, but you can have different URLs for that lead capture form with different tags. So for example, if for those that you want to uh, track as the Black Friday uh, promotion campaign, and you're sending a special special newsletter and a special a special I don't know um, ad campaign on Facebook or Google or whatever, and you want to make sure those those leads coming from that uh, source are tagged as Black Friday. You can have a Black Friday tag uh, in that URL, which means that people that fill up this lead capture form will be coming in your. Um, let me go back to the other window. One second, sorry. People that are coming in with that tag will end up um, automatically tagged with Black Friday, right? So you're gonna people that are gonna fill up that lead capture form will be having the Black Friday tag automatically, right? And there is other tags you can do. We'll talk about that in more details in in our knowledge base articles and tutorials. Uh, but you can add UTM tags that allows you to have some idea of attribution when you look at your trials and your prospect where they came from. Did they come from organic search? Did they come from paid search? Did they come from this campaign or that campaign? Did they come from that newsletter? So a way to get better idea of where your leads are coming from. Um, so yeah, so you can have your cl your clients automatically tagged uh, with a special promotion campaign. And then you can set up, as I said, uh, you can set up in your campaigns. Um, let me refresh. This one is outdated. Uh, you can specifically... Sorry, this one also timed out. We can specifically set up campaigns to target uh, people that have or not a specific hashtag. Okay, so that you can have one sequence that's going to be sent to your prospect without any special uh, promotion tag, and one sequence with those that have the promotional tag. Now you could create a separate status. So you can have a prospect new, whatever, and a prospect new specials or special campaigns. I that, that's possible. You can totally do that. Um, and and you can also um, have the status in the URL, so have your your leads coming in as a separate as a different status than your your, your prospect new status. Uh, I kind of not really recommend that at least for now. Uh, like I said, it's 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 not a good idea to have too many different statuses. It might be a little bit more confusing. I think tags are a good way to group uh, customers. Now tags can be used in different ways. I think you already know that. You can just look th look for them right here. So hashtag black. Friday, so that will give you all the Black Friday. You can batch email, batch MS them manually. That's been there forever. Now the idea here is we want to automate those follow-ups, right? So now you have two campaigns. That uh, sorry, let's go back here. One that will that will have a sequence for the Black Friday uh, uh, leads, and one a generic one for all your new, uh, but not the Black Friday one. So the Black Friday one will not get both sequence. It will only get the one for Black Friday. Does that make sense? I hope that's clear. So let's go back to our sequence. So here, now we're going to, uh, so now uh, we're going to set up different stages. So this one is already set up. I'll use it for my demos, but you can create uh, as many stages as you want. When you create a stage, you have different type of stages. You have the typical email and or SMS state. So that could be a welcome email uh, number one uh, and or SMS. It could be a simultaneous email and SMS at the same time. Or it could be email only or SMS only, right? If you have SMS, it could be from different uh, phone numbers because you can have multiple locations with different phone numbers. You can pick an existing um, an existing uh, SMS template that you have, um, or you can create a new one. And same thing for emails, right? So one thing, by the way, that we don't support today, but that we are planning to add is it's not a good idea because you don't know exactly when people will receive those SMSs. It's not a good idea to send somebody an SMS at 3 a.m. You know, that's, that's you know, uh, most people have their phone off while they sleep, or but you know, it's just felt it feels a little bit rude. You know what I mean? Um, and also more, more, more strategically, especially for SMSs, that when when you send an SMS, there is an expectation that 
there's going to be an answer right away. It's more of an instant communication than an email that's more asynchronous and more something that people will respond to later. Um, SMS have something like 5x the response rate of emails, right? So SMS are a very, very powerful way to get somebody's attention, uh, let's say, and get an answer. So what you might want to do is actually, first of all, not send an SMS in the middle of the night, but second, um, maybe strategically send that SMS at a time that your staff is online and they can respond to that potential response, right? So more strategically, um, so that's not available today, but one thing we're planning to do is saying that we, we're going to be allow you, allowing you to enter a uh, time range to say, okay, once, once we get to that state for that particular client, we want that SMS to be sent between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m., for example, because that's the time that we know parents are more likely to be able to respond to it. And also, my staff is going to be there to respond and engage with that customer and get them signed up, right? Because ultimately, we don't want to just send SMSs. We want to get them to, them to sign up, right? So that's coming soon as well. We're going to be having some kind of hour uh, uh, range for the SMSs to uh, more accurately target when that SMS gets sent, OK? So this is one type of stage. Um, and this is the most important one, I would say, because that's the whole point is to automate these emails and SMSs. Now, another type of stage could be a delay. So I'm going to kind of, uh, so if you look, for example, right now, we have a sequence where we have a first email, then we wait one day, then we do a first SMS follow-up, then we wait another day, then we do a second SMS follow-up, oh, sorry, a second SMS, uh, so, sorry, second email follow-up, then we wait another two days, then we do an SMS follow-up, so kind of alternating SMS, email, SMS, email. Um, and eventually at the end, after five, six, seven follow-ups, or actually uh, I think four or five SMS and four or five emails, we automatically mark the client as lost because if they have never responded at that point, you know, maybe stop, maybe stop harassing uh, them. Um, now you can obviously change that. So th let me show the different options. You can add uh, like delays, as we said, you can say one day, five hours, six hours, 12 hours, five days, whatever it is. You can also, um, uh, so you can do a what we call a manual action or due for a call. So due for a call is kind of a special manual action. So one, one thing that I've seen many schools do, and I do at my school, is we don't just send just emails and automated email and SMS, but sometimes we also want to actually call them and have a real call. Um, and, and what you can do, for example, is you can have a process where you say, okay, we're going to squeeze in an actual call, right? So we're going to go here and we're going to um, take the due call that I just added. I'm going to drag and drop all the way to the top. And we're going to say, okay, after... After a couple of emails and SMSs, probably on day three, we're going to actually give them a call, you know? Um, and, and obviously, you know, uh, this, a call is not automated. We don't have a robocall, and I don't really recommend to do robocalls. Uh, this is a call from your staff, right? So what's going to happen is that once, as the client gets those emails and goes to the different stages, after they became a prospect, they're going to be flagged for, okay, now they, we need to call these people, right? And is, they're gonna, that, that prospect is going to be stuck at that stage until you actually, somebody from your staff calls them. And more likely the person that's assigned to that prospect, because remember that you're going to have different prospects and they're going to be assigned uh, to uh, people in your, in your team that are going to be ultimately responsible for signing them up. You don't have to do this, by the way. This is not mandatory. You can also have no, nobody assigned to that and, and just for all anybody pick anybody that you want and follow up with them so the idea is is here is you're going to create those sequences and they're going to be fully automated but a, a call can go a long way right so maybe we sent you a couple of emails you haven't responded to them now we're going to give you a call and say hey is it a good time to chat are you interested in camera lessons uh we have this great new teacher tuesday 5 p.m how does that sound right so you know whatever your pitch is so you can basically schedule a call at that point another thing that you can do uh, and this is a little bit more kind of like uh, open-ended and a way to see how people use it. You can schedule a manual action. So this could be different things. It could be, uh, so an example, maybe in a different um, in a different uh, sequence, let's say you, you have a sequence of uh, emails for people who signed up for a trial. So maybe they haven't had the trial yet, uh, but we know they signed up because they have the status uh, prospect trial. And uh, let's say you, you're offering violin lessons and um, Maybe you have a couple of emails to say, hey, we're excited to see you for your uh, uh, piano, uh, your, your trial. And maybe an action could be, I don't know, uh, maybe um, check on violin, right? So something like that. Maybe you want to check that they do have a violin, that they're going to be showing up at their lesson with a violin. Um, or, or maybe they have one, maybe they don't have one, maybe we need to prepare one. Maybe we need to fit them to, to get the right size or whatever. So you can create a specific action on a given uh, sequence 
to basically flag that client that okay this client is due for an action now uh because they, they, they be, they're going to be coming in the next few days for a violin we need to check whether they have a violin or not or we need to i don't know some action that that you you require i've, I've talked to a lot of customers who have different tasks you know at different stages of that prospect um enrollment um uh, uh life cycle right so that could be a a manual action that you can configure to be whatever you want it to be and finally the last type of stage that we have is a loop back right so loop back means actually there is also trigger sorry so trigger means triggering triggering uh, something so right now we only have mark client has lost so that could be ultimately after after a bunch of emails and calls and and they never responded they're not interested we're going to just mark them as lost automatically so kind of like get the funnel cleared there's no need to accumulate people that never respond to you after five ten or whatever your number is uh, follow-ups you we mark them as lost um and the other one is a loop back. So what you could do, so instead of marking them as lost, you could just keep emailing them forever. Uh, maybe not recommended, but but if you do, don't do it too often. Maybe after that, every every let's say every 15 days, we're gonna have a loop back, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna yeah create a delay. So let's add a delay, and instead of marking them as lost, let's remove that. We're going to um, add a loop back and say okay, we want the loop back to the last follow up. So uh, let's say. Uh, uh, SMS follow up five, like maybe this, right? So something like that, where you say, okay, um, we're gonna go through all these different messages, and every every day or every two days, we're gonna call you a couple of times, we're gonna SMS you, blah blah blah, uh, and eventually we're just gonna send you a, a, a check in every fifteen days forever until eventually we mark you tell us, okay, stop emailing me, or stop SMSing me, or uh you mark them as lost manually because okay they've been in the funnel now for i don't know six months and they never responded maybe it's over <laughs> we should stop hoping anything to come out of that lead right so and of course there's going to be more configuration option over time uh one thing that is that we're going to add in the near future is to say okay maybe you loop five times and then after that you give up and you mark them as lost so there'll be different ways to set up your your looping but this is the basic is, is in place already so now let's let's uh let's let's see what it looks like so let's say we we create that, that campaign it's it's ready to go uh we have we have we keep track of who did what and all that stuff we have the criteria set you can see the preview uh so i'm going to talk about this here in a second you know here you can um okay i need to share my actual screen so you can see all my um uh so i'm going to switch screen for uh, sorry not screen window for a second so this is the um the email uh editor so i opened that it opened a window uh, it has auto save we also added recently a way to embed videos um embedding videos by the way is really just a thumbnail and a link to youtube that's great for a newsletter but don't do that uh, or maybe you avoid to do that but you could do it in some cases for prospect follow-up for prospect follow-up you want your emails to look as plain as possible I, and again i'm not a great marketer but my understanding is we want those emails to look like they came from a human not they were, they were not automated right so they want we want them to be personal they want them to look like a simple email in text, not a fancy newsletter that's centered with lots of images and lots of stuff. But you could also, um, you know, maybe you have a couple of real plain uh, welcome follow-up emails, uh, you know, that you send, and maybe you also squeeze in a more rich and um, nice-looking email that talks about the value of music education or why your school is the best school in the area or something a little bit more markety uh, and, and nicer looking so kind of alternating like emails that look like they were written by a human and and, and more like newsletter type uh, uh, emails right so up to you but definitely uh, you want your follow-up to um, to look nice and look uh, simple at least for the follow-up and based on which stage they're at, I'm going to talk about ways to customize these emails, obviously, but you can create those templates with our template editor that you guys probably already know and love already. Um, and definitely always uh, include an unsubscribe link. You're responsible. We provide you with a block uh, with an automatically generated unsubscribe link. And you can modify the content if you don't want to like, you don't like the copyright or you want a different line for... Uh, you have a, you're receiving this because you've ex, you've expressed interest in our music lessons or whatever you wanted to say. That's fine, but definitely leave the unsubscribe link because if you're spamming people um, or if you're sending emails that are un, unsolicited, let's say, and and you don't give people away or, or well, technically those emails are solicited because they give you their their email their email address and 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 you um, they're, they're a prospect that you're following up with, but you need to give them a way out, right? Whether it's SMS, SMS they can just 
type stop and we will stop sending them stop sending them SMSs. But you need a way to unsubscribe of those emails you're sending them um, in an easy way. And if you don't, you could be completely banned and completely blocked and 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 your domain. So the domain that you um, let me reshare the rest of the screen. Sorry about that. Uh, the domain that you um, uh, registered, right? So this domain here, that's important. Uh, I'm actually going to do it because we won't be able to uh, continue the demo. So you you went and added your domain. So here I'm, I'm using our local uh, test domain here. Um, so if you haven't done this and you're already using Plus, or if you're going to be using Plus, you need to do this. This is very important. You need to, we have a knowledge base article that explains this, and our CS team is available to help you. You need to set up these domain, uh, your DNS uh, entries. This basically allows Opus One IO to send emails on behalf of your domain in a way that's you know legitimate and best practice and everything that uh, all the email providers require these days. Um, but it's under your domain, right? So we're sending emails under your domain, and if you spam people, your domain will be banned, not our other customers' domain, right? So you're responsible for what you do within your domain. Um, so. Uh, let's go back to our campaign. So now we have a, we have our sequence. We we talked about a different type of, of sequences, um, and let's just kind of simulate a little bit what it looks like. So we have um, um, so actually I need I need a couple of seconds to uh, make sure everything is up and running here. Uh, one second. Uh, just want to make sure I have a little green dot here so that we perfect. Okay, so. Now we have basically a sequence, and first of all, let's go and activate it. So we're going to activate our uh, prospect new sequence, and it's no longer a draft. We're going to activate it. Our domain is validated, and we're going to say, okay, we want this email to start maybe uh, Monday or whatever, but for the sake of the demo, we're going to say activate now. And um, now the campaign is active, right? So it's an active campaign, and it happens to be ongoing as well. So now you see it's active, and uh, what what does that look like? So now what's going to happen for these for these clients, right? So let's take a look. I'm going to actually simulate that time passes by here, right? So we have um, uh, kind of, um, we're not going to wait two days for the demo to continue. Um, so now I'm uh, basically running that campaign um, and it's a test environment. So, so first of all, by the way, you notice that um, by default, because I'm in a demo here, actually, let me update this. We're flagging people that says no email and or no SMS, all right? So this is not how it should be by default. So let me unflag them so that um, so we we want we don't want to opt out of um, of um, of uh, SMS. And we also uh, do have an email. So let's just set an email test. They're not going to really receive this, but test opus one io at gmail.com. So obviously, you know, uh, people need to have an email to receive one and need to have a phone number to receive one. So you need to make sure those are in your lead capture form or that you ask for them when you and when you create an account for somebody and and, and capture their information. So yeah, so um, so you're gonna have people here that um, have or not. So so basically, again, this is a demo. You should not see no SMS and no email for all these people. But if they don't have an email or if they don't have a phone number, so actually, let's also add a phone number. Sorry for. Uh, that person, uh, five, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Now that person is capable of receiving a email or SMS. So we, we're flagging for you either people that don't have an email and or SMS or, or a phone number or that have actually unsubscribed from, uh, and that could happen. You could have people that want to talk to you. They want to sign up for your school, but they just don't want to receive SMSs. So they responded stop when you send them that automated follow-up, but you can still call them. You can still... Uh, email them, you can still uh, you know sign them up, right? But we're at least flagging them so you know they're not going to receive the SMS part of your campaign or they're not going to receive the email part of your campaign. Um, now, the other thing is here, uh, let's take an actual example. Let's pick uh, Adrian here. Uh, Adrian is a kid. Um, and the kid doesn't have, a, he's maybe 10 or whatever, seven, he looks a bit younger than 10. Let's say he's eight years old or seven years old. Um, and you're talking to the mom or the dad, right? So here, John. Um, uh, now, um, we're, we're basing the SMS flag and the email flag all actually on the parents because most of the time that 10-year-old is not going to have a phone, not going to have an email. And this is where Opus One IO handles this very well and where usually people who try to integrate any software with ActiveCampaign or MailChimp find a lot of problems is that you want to know who is the client, so like who's the prospect, and here it's Adrian, he's a kid. 
uh, but you you want to target the parents of sometimes multiple kids uh, based on what interest the kid has and what uh, what what the prospect there for. So here we're actually talking to um, we're gonna be talking to the dad, and um, let me access his account really quick because I want to en enable email and SMS to make sure it's it's on. So we're gonna say that this dad does want to receive SMSs. Um, and uh, he does have an email. Yes, he has it. No, he doesn't have an email. So let's give it another test uh, at uh, gmail.com. So again, you cannot send SMS and email campaigns to people who don't have uh, a phone or, or um... OK. So now we have Adrian, who doesn't have an email or an SMS himself, but he's connected to his account manager, to dad. So dad will be the one receiving the email and or SMS. But we're keeping track of the prospect as the kid, because this is the kid that want to do piano or whatever. We're not sending up the dad. The dad could be a prospect themselves, um, but here um, it's the kid that we're targeting. Okay. So now um, I don't know if it's actually worked, but you see now we, there's a new there's a new um, um, tab here which will campaign. So you have here, here the history, so notes that you can say. Maybe you called them, you didn't call them, whatever. Um, and maybe they signed up for something, or there is some kind of history for that kid and their parents. Uh, but now we're gonna have a new tab, which is the campaign. So what happened? what type of campaign is that kid part of uh, that's ongoing and active, right? So here I can actually see the details. So we can say that I ran the, the campaign is active and he's part of the prospect new sequence. Uh, but actually the, there was no email when we first ran it. <laughs> so I should have set it up before we ran the campaign. And so the welcome email stage has been kind of skipped because or failed because there was no email, right? So I'm going to rerun the campaign and, and pretend that, you know, sometime has, uh, sometime has, um, has passed. And we're gonna refresh this. So now, now there is an email. So we know that an email was sent. He was sent the welcome email, right? Now he's in a pending one day. We're waiting one day before the next follow-up. But if you go to that client and you check what's going on with them, okay, that we know that they received that welcome email, right? Now, if you want, if you want to remember what does what does a welcome email look like, you can go to your campaign and see and have the preview here. And this is the welcome to Opus One Music, discover the joy of music, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we, we can do a whole um, session about what kind of content we should put in our sequences. That's uh, more like an art than a science, I would say. Um, but this is the first welcome email, the first follow-up that they get automatically. Okay. Uh, now, um, now we're in waiting one day, and we're gonna actually. I'm gonna run my little script here and pretend that one day has passed, and now a day has passed, and. Uh, is going to receive the and by the way all of them are receiving it right so uh there's other people here same thing uh they're part of that campaign this one doesn't have a, any any email or sms but somebody who does actually they, most of them don't so that's not great but let's let's, get, let's stick to adrian for, for this demo um now that we see that another day has passed they receive the sms follow-up right which is there and um another day has, is going to be passed and now we're going to go to the next step and uh, now, um, now they're due for a call. So what does that look like, right? So now um, they are at the stage where we want to give them a call and because they already received a couple of follow-ups. And, um, and let's say they haven't answered those emails, they haven't answered those SMS that we sent so far. Now I'm the admin, and let's say I am uh, uh, this uh, business uh, uh, admin staff here, or sales, whatever you want to call it. And when I log in, I'm going to say, OK, show me uh, only my prospect. So I'm not that person, so I don't see anybody. But let's say I only see my prospect. And maybe I want to start with those that have an action due, right? So I can see that there is a call due for Adrian and Brooke here, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call them. Um, and, uh, and until I mark this task as completed, they're going to get stuck at that point. And that call can happen once now. Maybe I get them on the phone, maybe I don't. Maybe I try a couple of times, right? So let's say that Adrian did answer, and I'm talking to John, the dad here. So I'm calling and say, hey, John, how are you? Uh, we'd like to get Adrian signed up. You express some interest for our music lessons. Um, what are you interested in? OK, we're interested in piano. OK, great. Let me write this down. And do you have a preference for our location? Oh, Palo Alto. OK, great. Let me write this down as well so we can keep track of it. Um, do you know, do you have an idea of which teacher you're interested in and, and maybe you, whatever you do your pitch and then let's say they, um, at the very least at this point, now they, you don't want to keep sending them those automated email because they engage with you. Right. So we're going to mark this, uh, call as completed. Uh, maybe we're going to write a note and say, I spoke, uh, spoke with John 
uh, he's interested in this and this and that, and maybe he's not ready to sign up for a trial just yet. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to move them to the next stage, which is the prospect has been clarified. So we know they want Palo Alto Studio and Piano. And we're going to move them to the next follow-up stage because, first of all, we want to make we, we don't want them to keep receiving these um, um, welcome uh, emails because now we already know what they want. So we're going to mark this as completed, right? And by the way, you, you notice that it went to the next step, which was to check check for the violin, which is irrelevant in this particular example here. But what's going to happen now is that uh, when the next um, after a little bit of time passes, now we're going to see okay, well, you know, he's no longer in the prospect new follow-up because he responded we actually got some information out of them maybe they haven't signed up for a trial yet but it's the next stage which is the prospect follow-up stage right so at this point is here now maybe he signed up for a trial so maybe let's say um um uh it does, it's not just qualified he wants to sign up so we're going to go ahead and book an appointment right from here and okay they wanted a piano trial right so i'm going to skip this to save you some time but they booked their trial and now they're going to move automatically to prospect trial, right? So at this point, obviously, they're no longer targeted by the prospect new campaign, and they're going to stop receiving those uh, sequence email because the job is gone. The job is done, or at least partially. Now they uh, they we know what they want, and they actually book their trial. Now we just need to wait for the trial to happen, and then once the trial does happen, so as soon as you take attendance, they're going to move automatically to prospect trial follow up. And then maybe you have another sequence that sends emails to those that have a trial, but they haven't signed up yet until they do sign up or until they eventually uh, either marked as lost, maybe sleep, or hopefully signed up. So that's kind of a, I want to leave a lot of time for questions. Uh, I think we already covered a lot. Um, um, uh, so Sam, we have one question already. Um, Hanach wants to know, how do you get the SMS and email buttons to show on each prospect? Like like you have on yours. Okay, so uh, so I think uh, you are referring to. Let's go back to Adrian here. So this button here, right? So this shows up. So if John has a phone number, and if you have the SMS feature enabled, when you click here, it will send you straight to our SMS interface, where you can SMS that that customer and talk to them. And then, uh, um, by the way, you, you might be sharing a different screen. We're looking at the campaign screen. We don't see John. Oh, okay. So uh, it looks like uh, you may get, you guys may have missed something because. <laughs> um, okay, let me reshare because what's showing here is not what you're saying. Uh, what about now? Can you guys see my SMS window? Yes. Okay. So I was, let, let me go back to where I was. So I hope you didn't miss too much because. I was showing, uh, looks like you were seeing another window that I was showing, okay. So I was looking at Adrian Frederick here. So we moved him from follow-up trial to, to, to trial follow-up. Um, so if I want to talk to the, so if I want to email the dad, I can just click here, right? So right now it's gonna open my email client and uh, I can email the dad from here. Um, if I want to SMS the dad and you have a phone number and there is a, and you have SMS enabled for your personal your account, then you just click here, and you can SMS the data from here, and and you know, and uh, back back and forth. You you can ignore the name here. The name don't match because it's a demo system, and I have hundreds of clients with the with the same phone numbers because these are fake phone numbers. But basically, you're gonna see the name of John, and and you can go back and forth between uh, between uh, uh, the prospect that you were looking at and the SMS interface. And if you do. Um, in, in, in the in the client history, uh, if you haven't if you guys haven't used Plus yet, uh, you should know that we show you not just the note that you wrote. So you know maybe um, uh, John uh, signed up or Adrian is now uh, signed up. Uh, so you can leave notes. You can if you try to call them and um, you left a message, we can we give you a quick button to say you know I called and left a voicemail. So you know there was some kind of follow up. You can set the next follow-up date to say, okay, we'll try again uh, next day. Um, and we also show previous SMS conversation that you may have had with that client, right? So here, we show you the last message and you can just click and go straight to that conversation uh, as I did earlier, right? So the the value of having Opus One IO billing, scheduling, a lot of that, plus CRM prospect management and SMS all in one place as you can, everything is there, right? It's very easy at your fingertip. Uh, to access all that, right? So, does that answer the question? 
Um, yeah, I think that might be what they were referring to. Okay. Uh, we okay. have another question. Is there a way to import clients from MailChimp that may not be that may not be in Opus, yeah. or they might be? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, so uh, so you can totally do that. What 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 you do is uh, when you enable uh, Opus One IO Plus, we give you a free import, and sometimes we we can give you a second one. You know, we 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 don't want to be charging every time you do that, but. Um, you can give us um, either a simple list with uh, emails, uh, names, and whatever inform information you have. It's the same format that for your client import. So when you migrate it from teachers on my music staff or whatever, or if you have another CRM like HubSpot or High Level or any of those, you can export uh, emails and and uh, and names and phone numbers and uh, and uh, student and parent information, and they will be imported. So. And you can also set which status you want them to have. So, and maybe also the tags you want them to have. So, if you already have prospect in another system, you want to bring them over. And what this will happen is those will be created as what we call the clients in Opus One IO. So, those are ready to sign up. Uh, they will be created with the right uh, the right status, and they will, uh, if they have the right status, they will show up directly under the right status here. And then you can have them part of your sequence, right? Um, so you can have. Maybe all your old prospects and everybody that don't have necessarily a, a status, and that gonna start receiving a newsletter. So that's exactly what I did. I took um, all my clients out of Mailchimp and I and I sent my newsletters through Opus One IO for the last few months. And you know, we, we you can create a campaign and say everybody, right? So you can create a one-time campaign. I can do it very quickly here for you guys. Let's call it uh, April newsletter. And. Uh, uh, let's pick an existing template. So we have an existing template for April newsletter. We create that campaign, and then under your audience, you can create an audience and say everybody, right? Include everyone, right? So uh, everybody that's in your system, so current clients, old clients, prospects, everything, and it will tell you how many people that matches. And you have a preview here, and and again, yes, you, it can import uh, everybody um, that you um, that you have. Um, uh, in your MailChimp or any other system, you should give us a CSV file with all the information. I think as Enoch has another question, right? Uh, yeah, it was a clarification to the first one. Hanach says, I was referring to the main screen where you have all the prospects and each one has the red SMS and yeah. email button. So, so these are, uh, so you have this red call if a call is due, right? So that means you're at the stage where there's a call due, right? So this is the, 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 the status in the campaign. Uh, if the customer has opted out of SMS, so they have replied stop, they will be flagged as no SMS, right? So either you will see this no SMS red but or red pill or tag here. If either they don't have a phone number, so that tell, tells you, hey, they're not going to receive an SMS because we don't have a phone number for that kid or those parents. Uh, or they, we do have a phone number, but they, they they told us not to send them SMSs, right? So that's why you'll see that red no uh, SMS. And the red no email is same thing, is we don't have an email for them, or they unsubscribe, they don't want to receive marketing emails from you, right? So that's why that's why and when you will see those uh, flags for uh, no email or no SMS, if that makes sense. Okay, that was it. And then going back to the MailChimp um, import, what about the people who have unsubscribed in MailChimp but not yeah. in Opus? How can we make sure? Yeah. So, uh, well, so it depends. Uh, it depends if you were using the MailChimp integration uh, with with Opus, uh, which you should have if you were using MailChimp. Um, so, in that case, you know, people that you had in MailChimp who unsubscribed, they're already in Opus anyway because we synchronized them. And those who unsubscribe in MailChimp would be automatically flagged as, so for example, here if we pick uh, Alexandra, you see this um, opt out of marketing emails would be flagged. So if you use the MailChimp and Opus One IO integration that we've had for years, um, people who unsubscribe in MailChimp would be automatically flagged in Opus One IO as opt out of marketing emails. Now, if you were not integrated or if you come from something else on MailChimp, um, you can give us a list of emails. And uh, you can add a column to unsubscribe them from marketing emails, right? Or you just remove them from the list. So if they're just, um, if you if you if you don't want us to email them, you can just not not include them, uh, or you can include them and have a column that says that you don't want uh, marketing emails for those clients. 
right? So that all it does is will set this flag. So the client can exist in the system. You can still sign them up, but they will not receive um, uh, what we call marketing emails. So now this this touches on an important point that you might, you guys you guys you, you guys might be wondering. Um, not every email you're going to be sending through Opus One is necessarily a marketing email, right? So what we call here like prospect follow-ups, those are pretty much uh, marketing emails. Um, but you know you might be sending uh, an up what we what I call an operational email, right? Something like, "Hey, we're closed because there's a snow day tomorrow," or "We're closed because our holidays are coming up," or "We have a recital coming up." So those are not marketing emails. Um, and people receive them because they're your customers. They're actively members, and they need to receive those. Um, so, so today uh, there is no way to differentiate those two kinds. But we're planning to um, we're planning to give you a way to say, okay, this is this campaign is a marketing campaign, like we're announcing stuff. This is our newsletter, whatever. Or this campaign is an operational campaign. Uh, I don't know if the term operational is what we'll stick with, but something that says it's not marketing. And in that case, those customers that says, do not send me marketing emails, will still receive it because it's actually an operational email. It's not a marketing. We're not trying to sell them something. We're just trying to notify them of something that you know they, 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 they're paying for and they, they, they should be receiving as an as a active member of, uh, of, uh, of our school. Does that make sense? Um, OK. Well, is there other questions? Um, it's hard to get feedback. Do you guys, is this interesting? Is this, um, does this make sense? Do you have specific questions about sequences or, or, or I guess, you know, another thing, if we don't have any other question right now on the chat, is there anybody that his part, that is part of the private beta and has, you know, feedback, feature requests, things they'd like to see, bugs or issues they've encountered that they would like to share? And I, I think we can, you know, we, we can do it through the chat or you can also unmute and, and just chat. You know, I think we don't, we're not that many that, you know, we need to unmute everybody. We need to mute everybody. So it, it's up to you guys if you have any um, any feedback or, or, uh, or any other questions. No? Okay. Um, well, I guess we're going to finish earlier than planned. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, OK, so I guess I'm, I'm going to use just the last few minutes that we have um, to give you a little bit of a, I can't really call it a sneak peek because I don't have it really ready to, um, to and, show. And, all and I, sorry, um, yeah. Sam, before you continue, maybe I do have a question that James asked um, okay. on, on our internal chat. Uh, for those phone calls that are due or like actions that, you know, a staff member needs to do, um, can you assign that to someone? Do they get a notification to know that, you know, they're supposed to call someone? How does that work? Yeah, so 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 you can assign. So so there is a concept of an owner or an assigned staff for each prospect. So Brooke is a prospect here. You can assign somebody in your team. So we can say, okay, uh, Brendan is uh, one of our sales or one of our admin staff. He's in charge of that, uh, is assigned to Brooke, right? That means if there is an action on Brooke, like a call is due, it's uh, Brandon here that's, that's, that's assigned to it, right? So what that means, when Brandon logs in, Brandon can say, okay, show me only those that have an action due and show me only my prospect and he will see only the prospect that are assigned to him. Uh, so that's, that's the way to do it. There's no notification. Um, we could add notifications. I'm not a big fan of it because you're gonna have hundreds of prospects. And when you start sending people hundreds of notifications, it's just noise. They just don't look at them. It's better to tell your staff, okay, you log in, you first you start with people that are maybe uh, overdue and that are you, you want to show only your own prospects. So you log into your account, you show only your own prospects, and uh, maybe, and then you switch with those that have an action due, those that are overdue. Um, you know, so you can play with these filters to to kind of like manage prospects uh, accordingly based on those that are due for a manual follow-up or manual action, right? So that's probably the best, most optimum way to do it. There is something I want to add on this topic. Um, in your business settings on the CRM, you can also have a set of staff that are automatically assigned. So that's a good idea to say, every time there is a new prospect coming in, 
we're going to assign them to maybe Brandon is our main sales or main admin staff. And maybe we have a couple of other staff. So maybe uh, Andrea and maybe, um, uh, I don't know, let's just pick somebody, Brian, right? So you can have new prospect automatically assigned to, uh, sorry, new, uh, uh, sorry, staff being automatically assigned to any new prospect that come in your funnel. And you can even prioritize them. So you can say maybe um, Brandon is more focused on sales than Andrea and uh, and Brian. So Brandon, Brandon will get, you know, twice the amount of, um, of assignments than Andrea and Brian do, but uh, Brian and Andrea still do sales and follow up, so they also need to get some. So you can basically have um, a weighted and a prioritized way to automatically assign prospects to uh, to your staff, and based on that, that's you know that's um, and if you give them commissions, those are the staff that will get the commission when that that client gets signed up, right? So that's how you would do it. Thank you. Yeah, and we so, do another question. Sure. Um, it says, would all prospects for the campaign be under new, not follow up? When would the follow up column be used? Okay, so, so the campaign that we did, if you remember, was for prospect new, right? So we 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 activated the campaign for prospect new. So this sequence here, which you, you can pause, you can duplicate, update, whatever. This sequence is matching the clients that have the prospect new status, right? So only right now those. Now you can create a separate campaign, a separate multi-stage set of, of sequence of emails and actions uh, and SMSs for your prospect follow-up. For, so for those, I guess that um, maybe you you they're they're, they're better um, they're better um, qualified, but they haven't signed up yet. They can receive another sequence of email, right? So that's that's how you would do it. You would create a separate sequence. So you would have a, I have one actually in my demo here, prospect follow-up sequence. So you can create a new campaign or update this one. And then this one would be for those that are prospect new, right? So uh, you can create. So that, that's, where, that's where you would set up the, the, the sequence based on the status that they have. Um, uh, and it could be prospect follow-up, could be prospect trial, pro trial follow-up, whatever you want it to be, right? Now, something I actually um, haven't talked about, and I, and I explained it a little bit in this Loom video, so I really encourage you guys to watch it. You can also uh, have a lot of flexibility on the, your templates and have the name of the client or the name of the recipient. So I guess I want to explain that again because it's super important and most people don't understand it at first. Um, so let's say you want to send an email to, um, you want to automate emails to, uh, I think we have Ad we had Adrian here, right? So Adrian is, um, is a prospect, but we're talking to John. John is the dad, uh, Adrian is the kid. Now, when we send emails to people, you're going to have uh, cases where uh, the person receiving the email is the, re the client and some case where they don't. Like, so for example, here, Adrian is a five-year-old kid. They're not receiving emails, but we're talking to John, the dad, about Adrian, right? So you want the email to be able to say something like, uh, let's go to the templates and let's pick... Um, uh, let's pick a welcome email or this copy here. Um, actually, no, I'm going to just uh, edit another one. Yeah, let's just pick this one. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, that's fine. I just edit this one. So um, I'm going to update this email and I'm probably going to need to reach, re, re, reshare. Okay, let me switch. Uh, okay, here it is. So so we haven't talked about, um, we, we have a lot of very powerful ways to, so can you guys see my editor here now? Yeah. Um, so when you, when, you, when you craft your emails, there's a lot of different things you can do. So first you can include in the email, um, you can include um, information that we know about the client, right? So let's just uh, remove this and say, uh, sounds like you are, are interested in, and then you can include a merge tag. So you remember we created a merge tag instrument. So we also include the 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 the, um, the groups, the the categorized tags that we talked about earlier. So I created an instrument client tag. So we can say here because we don't know what you're tagged as yet, right? But you may be tagged as piano, you may be tagged as violin. So any of those that match an instrument that we know is an instrument, we can include it in the email. So you can say, sounds like you're interested in whatever instrument you're tagged in, lessons, 
boom. And so automatically, the email will contact will contact if uh, will will contain sorry, piano or violin or voice or whatever uh, uh, tag that customer has. Now, what you can also do is you can handle the case where we do have a tag for the client or not. So let's say you have a sequence of clients that some will have tags or instrument tags, some don't. You can say, okay, let's. Um, I'm gonna mess this up a little bit just for the sake of the example here. So we're gonna take this out. We're gonna create a other section here. So text, and we're gonna have one version that we receive if there is a instrument, or another version. So let's duplicate this one that we receive if there is no instrument, right? So for example, we can say, you know, have you decided on a instrument? instrument you would like to learn or sign up for right so now we don't want to send both right we get we're going to have cases where we do have an instrument tag in case that we don't so you can add what we call display conditions so these are more advanced use cases right um so display conditions say okay we want to show this particular part of the email but only if the client is tagged uh with an instrument so we can say if the uh, the uh, client um, is tagged with any instrument, so whether it's piano, voice, violin, guitar, cello, right? So you can do it like this, right? And now when they don't, we want this one, right? So this one is gonna be if the client is not tagged with any instrument, so none of the tags on the clients contain an instrument, then we're gonna have this version. So you can, there's a lot of powerful way, and it, it can also quickly become you know complicated, so you wanna really think about how you want to craft your campaigns, but you can have the content of your email um, selectively um, uh, uh, shown based on whether they have a tag or not, or what is the and include the tag uh, if it's an instrument or, or something like that in your email, right? So that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do, which is more traditional, and I've, I've mentioned that in several videos now, you can also say, oh, this is a typical, maybe more, more uh, specific to uh one-time campaigns so let's say you want to send um, um something that says uh recital announcements recital announcements and you want one text that is um hey uh the name of the client so let's say we're gonna say um the uh, recipient name so this is the recipient is the person receiving the email and we can say your recital is coming up soon right so that's the case where so we want this again okay, let's do the other version the other version is also hey uh client name but now we don't want to say your recital because the parent is not the one performing we want to say your kids recital is coming up but we want to name the kid because maybe the parent has five kids and not all are going to the recital so not all are being targeted by this particular campaign so we can say um sorry so this is not client this is recipient so recipient first name and we can say hey recipient first name and we can say client first names recital is coming up soon right so now we have two different version oh, sorry of that message and one is the one that we want to receive so we need to update the display condition here so we're going to remove the instrument display condition because it doesn't make sense so for both, and we're gonna add another display condition. We're gonna say recipient type. So if the client, if the client is the recipient, so if the if the if essentially if this is an adult student, right? If the person that we're talking to here, the dad, is the one participating in the recital that we're targeting here, we're gonna say your recital is coming up. Now, if mo most likely we're talking to mom or dad and uh, we're talking about their kids' recital and which kid is being targeted because they're part of that recital, we're gonna do a display condition here where we say recipient type, the recipient is the account manager of the client. And, and basically you can have just one email, one campaign, and you can say, I wanna send this campaign to all my active students. Some of them are adults and they're the one participating. Some of them are kids and we're emailing their parents, right? And so if you, I hope, that, I hope, I hope I'm being clear, you can dynamically control the content of your email based on these rules as of, you know, are you the recipient and the client or are you the your recipient, but 
your client is your kid, that kind of thing. So we have very powerful ways to do display conditions. This can also be a foot gun, so be careful. We've had a lot of clients that messed this up and ended up with emails with the wrong content. So you really have to understand how this works. Again, our team is there to support you if you have any questions. Uh, but you can you can uh, you know use very um, powerful way based on whether you're the client and the recipient and whatever tags you have or whatever like uh, promotion campaign you want to include and have different variation of those emails based on tags, etc. Does that make sense to everybody? Uh, I see a question from Andy. So, okay, so let me clarify a little bit. Sounds like there's some confusion. So the, let me close this um, and go back to the prospect window. It uh, should be this one. So um, these statuses are whatever you want them to be. So if you stick to the standard one, new, follow-up, trial, trial, follow-up, sleep, lost, completely fine. Prospects are going to be created based on your settings. So if you if you register somebody or if somebody fills your lead capture form or if they try to book a trial but they don't complete the booking, they're going to be labeled as prospect new. Why? Because this is how you set it up, right? So prospect new is the status that we assign to new clients. So that's the entrance of your funnel, right? Now, if your funnel... And you, if you use the default one or whatever, if you have another status called follow-up uh, and you want to differentiate those that are qualified and maybe that are not engaged yet or not actively engaged with you yet versus those that are you, you're actively following up with, you can have another status called follow-up, whatever you want to call it. And you either move those clients once they've been qualified to the next status and they're going to be receiving a different sequence or no sequence. So maybe you can have a an automated sequence only for those that maybe haven't responded yet. And then those that are actively responding, you move them to the follow-up because those are engaged, they're, they're, they're talking to you. Um, and maybe th those are not part of a sequence, so they're not going to be receiving an automated sequence. Does that answer your question, Andy? I think Andy left. <laughs> oh, yeah. OK, well, well, I hope that was useful for everybody else, at least. <laughs> so. Um, we're, we're about to run out of time. I hope this was useful. Um, happy to, to stay on a few more minutes and ask some more questions if there is any. Uh, but as you can see, um, this is a very well-integrated and powerful uh, way to do um, automated emails and automated follow-ups by email uh, calls and, and uh, SMS for your prospect follow-up. We're going to do more webinars and happy to take mm -hmm. more questions. I think it makes sense to do a webinar where we talk a little bit about more outside of the product itself, but what kind of uh, sequences are effective and we can have different people share their their secret sauce and their um, their drip marketing strategy. I want to give a, you guys a little sneak peek of um, something we're working on. Uh, we're looking into integrating your uh, email in Opus One IO directly. So the idea is you will be able to have in your client history the emails that uh, you send and receive to that particular prospect. So you can have all the history, email, SMS, calls, all in one place. Um, if you use HubSpot, for example, you might be familiar with this. And the ability to see those emails, maybe even respond to them directly in Opus One IO, uh, and very quickly and easily see for a given prospect or a given active client, you know, all the emails that were, um, that were uh, sent and received, but within Opus One IO, so you don't have to look up that client in Gmail separately uh, and have it all in one place. So that's a little sneak peek on something we're working on. That's still a prototype at this point, but we're hoping to have in the next couple of months. So a full integration of your mailbox into Opus One IO so that you can see here. Um, oh, actually, sorry, again, this screen sharing. Sorry, I, I thought I was sharing, but I wasn't. So let me do it again. Uh, I was showing this. So this is a preview of a prototype that we're doing where you can have emails that you are sent and received to and from that particular prospect uh, directly in Opus One IO um, in your prospect uh, client history. So you can see in one place all the emails, all the communication essentially by email, SMS, uh, and notes and calls that you made with that customer right there uh, in, in Opus One IO, so in the history between the emails and the SMS, all in one place. So that's something we're working on. Uh, you'll be able to... Uh, Hopefully, uh, if everything works out, 
you'll be able to um, have your emails and even answer those emails directly uh, in Opus One IO uh, and 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 facilitate communication and have all the communication with your customers in one place. Um, so that's another uh, cool thing that we're working on. As I said, and also earlier, another thing that we're working on is the ability to target active students and send them automated check-in at 30, 60, 90 days, for example, for getting Google reviews, getting uh, feedback, doing uh, customer surveys, and that kind of thing for all your active client as well. So that's coming up as well. OK, I think we're, um, is there any other question? Well, we have everybody here. Uh, I hope this was useful. We're, um, I think we're running out of time. So we're going to be posting the recording of this um, on our YouTube channel. And um, yeah, I hope this was uh, um, useful. And if you have any question, you, obviously, I have a few more minutes here. But um, if you want to reach out to our support team or our sales team, if you haven't enabled Plus yet and you want to try it out or uh, you know um, benefit from all this powerful uh, email automation and SMS automation, within uh, Opus One IO, uh, don't hesitate to contact us. OK, so yeah, so it looks like we don't have any uh, other questions. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys.